So, E3 happened, Mario Kart Tour is also a thing as well, and we got new information on Stadia, which I talked about in the previous video, so we're also going to talk about that, because, I mean, technically it was part of E3 Stadia, but I'm separating it into a separate thing because, because I need three things to talk about, leave me alone, stay tuned, because this is Remulus Roundup. Alright, welcome to Wormius Roundup, the show where shit gets rounded up by your boy, and you watch, or else. So, E3 is a thing that happened. I've forgotten most of it, but I'm gonna go through this little Reddit page where they kind of summarize the shit that went down. That way we can, like, recap. I didn't watch all the conferences because some of them were kind of dead. I, I, I kind of skimmed through a few of them. I watched Microsoft in full. I watched Nintendo in full. I watched Ubisoft in full, Square Enix. But we'll scroll through because I did follow what was going on. So EA live stream, Star Wars, yeah, I'm not really into that. But it was there. Apex was there, whatever. Battlefield, FIFA 20, Anthem, like sims 4 mm, i haven't really played much sims 4 i used to play sims 2 on psp back in the day but you know i'm not really into the sims right now i played a lot of sims 3 as well but yeah it's been a while he ate whatever next microsoft had a bunch of things that were kind of cool ori was cool um bleeding edge which one was bleeding edge again nah not bleeding edge forget about that cyberpunk yes when i was watching these conferences a lot of the things i was noticing was like there's like one thing and like almost every conference that i was like yeah that's cool and then everything else i was like sleeping so ea nothing really i guess microsoft had cyberpunk always cool but cyberpunk is the thing i'm looking forward to bethesda i just want to say this a lot of people have standard fallout 76 and i'm not really into that series so i can't really say why they dislike it over the others or anything there's some videos on it or whatever but can i just say that i'm glad bethesda are actually putting in effort to like update the game you know, because they could have easily just gone, this was a financial failure, or maybe it wasn't a financial, I don't know. Maybe it was, a, it was a critical failure, that's for sure. Let's just ditch it and start something new. I know a lot of companies like to do that, just fuck that, onto the next shit. But they were like, you know what, let's add new free content. Let's improve the game that people have already spent their money on to make them feel less burnt. To let them know that we're actually listening, that yeah, we fucked up, yeah, we thought this was going to be good, but it wasn't. So here are these free updates to let you guys know that we're actually putting in the work to try and win your respect back. And I respect Bethesda for that, I really do. Because they could have just put the game out after it got slammed and then just forgotten about it and then made jokes about it online for years or pretended it didn't exist simultaneously. But this actually had a few things that seemed kind of cool. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo seemed like something that I could get into. I need to see more gameplay to be sure, but I love games that are set in like that Asian setting, for example. Like they need to make a full blown, not like a budget, but a full blown Assassin's Creed in an Asian setting. I will fucking just buy that shit instantly. And I played them um, Sleeping Dogs, never finished it, but I loved that game. It was like an Asian GTA, like so. Even Doom Eternal, I've never played Doom, but it looks kind of interesting. I might pick it up. So Bethesda had a few things going for it as well. Not not bad, not bad. It got nothing on Devolver Digital, but I watched that conference and or was it a con not really a con? It was a, it was a video. That shit was weird as fuck. I don't even know what to say about that. The whole thing was just fucking weird. Um, if you've watched it, you know. Obviously, I can't. There's not much I can say about it. But I was going through. I was like, what is this? And then the after show was. Just, I don't even know. What, you know. So I can't say anything from that conference that i was looking forward to so pass on that pc gaming show i didn't watch the full thing i skimmed through it the only thing i properly recognize from this list is shenmue 3 which they've spot wrong here i watched the trailer for that a while back but really epic game store exclusive i fucking i fucking hate that shit like i really do for multiple reasons obviously epic game store is just inferior steam has been doing this for years so they know what the fuck they're doing epic game store just fucking sucks that's one thing the second thing is I don't like it when a company just comes out of nowhere and tries to steal the market that another company has been working so hard to build when it was underground. I had the same problem with Apple Music. Spotify was in the trenches for years doing streaming, like trying to build up the streaming hype. Years! Spotify's been out since it was founded in 2006, launched in 2008. 10 years! Literally, Apple Music was only started three years ago. Apple didn't even believe in streaming. They were like, nope, that's not, that shit's not gonna take off. And then when it did, obviously, Spotify 
took off then apple with their big big boy company let's buy beats let's spend all this money on marketing let's force people to use apple music by putting it front and center on the iphones and making it harder for spotify to actually be on iphone by charging them insane amounts for the premium if bought from an iphone there's a whole there's a whole rabbit hole i've read through the whole thing trust me i know what i'm talking about i just hate that thing that a company could just show up and you weren't doing the thing before but because i'm the big company i'm going to steal the whole market which takes us back to this situation you see steam has been around since 2003 they've been in the trenches since then i didn't even know about it for what eight years after it came out and i'd been gaming on pc in 2003 i was playing pc games in the early 2000s and they weren't on steam so clearly they had to work hard to get where they are today just for epic games to go oh we got fortnite now we're big and everyone's playing a ninja <laughs> let's make a store and obviously they're new so obviously they're not going to be as good as steam fine but instead of actually trying to improve and trying to win us over on their own merits what they'd rather do is just lower prices to try and snag some exclusives and pull them away from steam so we have to now go hmm i want this game steam is a superior platform but we'll make an exclusive on epic game store so that people will be forced to use our inferior store just because you made it exclusive so instead of actually improving your service and me going oh epic game stores added this cool new feature that steam doesn't have they're actually better than steam now let me move to epic game store or also create an account there oh fuck that all the good games that you expected shenmue 3 kickstarter said steam it said coming to steam they're not refunding people by the way and now they've just done a 180 and said only coming to epic game store exclusively for shenmue <sighs> i hate exclusives man i really do title to the same shit as well like instead of improving your platform let's just get let's just get exclusive i mean sony have exclusives on their on their console but at least their console is good if your platform is good fine i'll have to deal with your exclusive shit but when you have a shit platform it just it, it pisses me off so much limited run i didn't watch that i don't really care about them so mm. ubisoft i love ubisoft man i mean they got their own issues but they made assassin's creed they made prince of persia they made hawks like I love Ubisoft, man. Like, obviously, I don't play everything of theirs, but there's a lot of Ubisoft games I want to get into. When I was a teenager, playing like when the SEO trilogy was new, like I dead ass wanted to work for Ubisoft as a programmer. Like, I was like 16, so it's quite a while ago. But I really wanted to work at Ubisoft and work on Assassin's Creed games. And Ubisoft, just like all the other conferences, had like one thing at least that I was interested in, and that was Watch Dogs Legion. That shit looks sick. I played a tiny tiny bit of Watch Dogs, like a friend had it, I played a little bit of it, but I don't really know the game like that, I followed it a little bit, the concept sounded cool, but the game just didn't seem ready, even the same thing happened with Assassin's Creed, the first one, mm, it, was, it was the start, the second one is where things really took off, and even still, the gameplay in AC2 is not as good as Brotherhood, in my opinion, even though the world and the adventure feeling and the story is amazing, the AI in AC2 is just so like, dated, like, for real even then like i used to cheat the ai so easily in ac2 and they improved it in brother i think gameplay wise assassin's creed brotherhood was the best assassin's creed don't fight me on that that's just how i feel this is like the third Watch Dogs game if i'm not mistaken and i mean i was watching the conference live like you could fucking play as a granny you can play as anyone like that game looked sick that's one of the best games for e3 no doubt coming in 2020 of course um so i'm definitely looking forward to that early champions looked all right as well um the for honor thing I, I haven't really played for honor but i've heard of it i've seen some gameplay of it it had some extra content and then the division rainbow six ghost recon yeah it's pretty much one thing i cared about that gods and monsters thing apparently a lot of people were hyped for that i was just like it kind of looks cool mm, whatever and then square enix final fantasy 7 remake that looks kind of cool it's coming to pc if it comes to steam i might get it i might try it out because a lot of people are hyped for this and i've never really gotten into final fantasy apparently this is one of the best ones so if it's getting a remake might be time to give it a go if there's no like heavy story shit that i have to like you have to play final fantasies one through six before you can understand if it's like that then maybe i'll skip it i have to look more into that and then of course the marvel's avengers game a day oh it's called a day i didn't even know that but yeah i saw that that was fucking lit i'm definitely getting that glad it's coming to pc and it's not just going to be a ps4 exclusive because i mean i love spider-man ps4 but man i just wish i could play that at 4k 60 fps it would look so clean and the mods as well like, imagine the kind of mods we could get for spider-man ps4 it's kind of a shame that we won't get it on pc we probably will at some point they'll probably wait like several years and then port it or some shit like that but you know we'll see what happens and last but not least nintendo so nintendo had a bunch of shit a lot of shit i didn't care about luigi's mansion 3 
a bunch of other things. They had Banjo in Smash, which was really cool. I'm not really into Smash that way. Like, I can play it, but it's not something that I would play on my own time. Like, if I had a friend who's into Smash, I'd probably play it more often, to be honest. But everyone was talking about Banjo before. Like, is he going to be in Smash? The, the whole, like, will it, won't it, all that shit. So when it happened, I was actually pretty, like, shocked. I was surprised. It was pretty cool that they did that. We got some info on Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, and that was a thing i'll probably get that game because i'm a sonic fan you know i have to and then we also saw a bunch of other stuff that was already announced in previous conferences but now they're just saying yo it's coming to switch so you know switch is where it's at you know nintendo and that was pretty much it i'm looking here um iron maker 2 they showed it off but they didn't really give us anything new i was really hoping that we we're gonna get that extra game styles that new style like mario land or mario odyssey but as you already know we didn't get it and then they also announced at the end that they were working on a new zelda game so that's really cool i haven't finished breath of the wild yet i, I was enjoying it but i hit like a minor roadblock in the game but yeah, Nintendo had a good E3. It's hard to rank who won E3 because, in my opinion, Mario Maker 2 is going to be the best game of the year. Probably the best game of the decade. I know that sounds like an exaggeration, but I really love Mario Maker. So it's not even a surprise. And it's coming out this year because a lot of the things in this E3 were all announced for 2020. So it's kind of like, well, this sounds cool, but we're not playing it this year, we're playing it next year. And it just seems like an E3 preparing for next year, which makes sense because next year is when we're getting the new hardware. Speaking of which, I didn't even talk about the hardware. Microsoft in their conference had a uh, mention about the new Xbox or Scarlet, Project Scarlet, or whatever. And the whole thing was just talking about fucking loading times. I was like, what the fuck? Obviously, they're going to remove the disk drive if they're going this ham talking about load times. And I wasn't the only person who thought this to the point where they actually had to go online and do damage control and be like, yo, the next Xbox will actually have a physical disk drive. If we want to give people choice, and right now, a physical is a choice millions of people love. Everyone just assumed that they were going to go full digital. But maybe they don't want to take that risk, especially if Sony keep the discs, then it's going to look really bad on, on Xbox. So, I can see why they didn't do it, but it just seemed like after the trailer, that was all they were talking about. But yeah, I don't really know who won E3. <laughs> it's kind of tough. But I definitely think next year's E3 is going to be a lot better, because I think a lot of these games that are coming out next year, they're probably going to have them run on the new hardware as well, the PS5 on the Xbox Scarlet or whatever the fuck they call it. So next year when there's actual new hardware that probably all the devs are working towards, then we'll see some real shit. So this year was kind of a meh E3. There was a few highlights, but overall, a lot of just wait till 2020s going on. So obviously the hardware is coming soon. We also thought we were going to get like a Switch Mini or Switch Pro, but Nintendo didn't announce anything in their direct. So we'll probably hear something about that. Maybe next year, maybe they'll drop their pro mode at the same time as the next gen hardware. Who knows? All right, so Mario Kart Tour, the new Mario Kart game coming to mobile devices because everyone's making mobile games now. We got a closed beta and people are obviously leaking gameplay and showing information on it. So right now Polygon have got the article, Mario Kart Tour first details from the beta, character course and currency details revealed for Mario Kart Mobile. I've already seen gameplay of it because I watched it when it was being leaked a while ago, but I'm going to read some of these details just in case there's anything I missed and then we can look at some of the gameplay. But yep, yeah, it's in closed beta in US and Japan on Android devices. Gameplay mechanics appear to be simplified to cater to touchscreen controls. I noticed that in the gameplay too. Players steer their cart by swiping left or right to aim an on-screen arrow and using items like mushrooms and shells require a tap of the screen just below the driver. And apparently it's got 30 characters? Okay, cool. Characters are unlockable and have rarity level associated with them, of course. That's that's probably where they're going to make their money, the character unlocks. There was a lot of rehashed tracks in the footage that I saw. They got tracks from SNES to 3DS, Chucker Island 2, Rainbow Road. I don't know which one. Luigi's Mansion, Koopa Trooper, Dino Dino Jungle. Players start with 50cc and can unlock 100 and 200. Oh, okay. A lot of people were complaining that it looked too slow, but the gameplay was like just starting up the beta. But obviously, they were going to unlock faster speed. So some people fired back and were like, yo, it gets faster, chill. And they got some gameplay here. And okay, Nintendo Ninjas are on it. All right, Mario Kart Tour's characters as well as additional carts and gliders can be earned through a slot machine. Mm -hmm. Golden Pipe, which dispenses a random reward. Mario Kart Tour appears to incentivize unlocking and playing as other characters and carts by associating bonuses with each. Playing as Toad on a Toad Circuit will grant him additional item slots, as will playing as Luigi on Luigi's Mansion course. It's got currencies and time gating mechanics, green gems, Mario Kart Tour's premium currency. Okay, to get. Random items from the slot machine pipe. The ability to play Mario Kart Tour is governed by a stamina meter. So some 
oh, this game's with the energy meter. You're only allowed to play if you've got energy, and then you have to spend the gems to get more energy, and you have to spend real money to get the gems or grind hard in the game. But yeah, it sounds like a standard mobile game. Um, you know, like gems, all these things. Are they driving in blooper cards? Shit. Just going through the gameplay now. Oh, this is the one from DS. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, I remember this track. A lot of people are hating on it, but it doesn't look bad, in my opinion. It looks fine for a free-to-play mobile game. So if it comes to Android, which it is, then I'm going to be getting it um, and trying it out, of course, on Premier List as well. And it looks kind of fun. It'll be interesting to see how well the playing with, like, tapping the screen or swiping or whatever will work for a game like Minecraft, especially at, like, 200cc, because I'm just looking at this now, and it, it looks kind of interesting. I guess people might be mad because they feel like it's going to prolong the time we have to wait before we get a new proper Mario Kart game, and maybe that is true, especially since it's been, what, five years since Mario Kart 8? Hopefully, Mario Kart 9 is lit, but I don't think we're going to get Mario Kart 9 on this current system. Maybe they'll save it for the Pro, maybe they will make us wait till the next entire Switch system or whatever system Nintendo make after the Switch. So it's really hard to say if this is going to affect the time we wait to get it. And finally, Google is back at it again with information on their new streaming service. The reason why I wanted to separate this aside from, you know, having a third thing to talk about is because it seemed like throughout the whole E3, everyone was doing something streaming or subscription gaming related. And that's what kind of made it weird. Like, Uplay has got like a Uplay Plus now, and those games are going to be on Stadia. Microsoft have got their Game Pass thing, subscription thing. Like, everyone is doing these subscriptions and these streaming things now. Like, I guess it's the new wave. PS Now is already a thing, to be fair. I can't be giving Google too much credit. But, you know, it arrives in November, they had a Connect thing, I watched it, there was a bunch of games, most of which I didn't care about, some of them that I did care about I've already got or playing on other hardware, so I'm not going to be using them here. They got a controller, it looks cool, it doesn't look like a bad controller, but I'd rather just use my DualShock 4, which you can use on Stadia. I'm just going to quickly go through this page, I haven't got too much to say, but... I like the idea of what they're going for, like this really is the future, and once it gets perfected, right now I'd rather still game on my PC, but it could be a surplus, like an additional thing, like I'll always be a PC gamer, and obviously consoles will have certain exclusives that will make me have to get like a PS4 or whatever Sony make or whatever Nintendo make. But it could be a thing that I add on top of it eventually. Like, if I just want to, like, travel somewhere and I've got my MacBook Pro, which Max cannot fucking game, I'll just take my Stadia. I'll take it with me, it's cloud. I'll just have my Stadia on the MacBook Pro, and then I can game on the MacBook Pro as if it's actually a competent gaming PC. So, I think it will be good as an additional thing, for me personally. But as a base thing, you know, the casuals can have that. I'm going to stick with my gaming PC. My shit lights up, like, that shit goes blue, like, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not, I'm not about to use this as a main thing, but I think it's definitely cool that they're doing this now, because, like, 10 years from now, it's just gonna be perfected, it's gonna be so seamless, that you're just gonna be gaming, like, you're gonna be fucking in Australia, you know, just playing some random, like, I don't even know where I'm going with this reference, I don't even know, but <laughs> this looks cool. No waiting for game downloads, you can get 60 FPS, 4K, HDR, and surround sound, and they've got like a connection test. Yeah, so it says 35 plus, you're pretty much set, so yeah, I'm definitely fine. And then just games that they've got coming. My only problem is if there's exclusives on Stadia, because at the moment they get exclusives, which they're probably going to try and do, because they want people to sign up, so they're probably going to get some game that I really want. They always do this. Some game that I just really want. And then I'll make it a Stadia exclusive. Streaming only. No way to play it natively on a PC or a console or anything. And it's going to be like, fuck, I have to get this thing. I know they're going to do that. Maybe not yet. Right now they're just getting current games and old games or whatever. They're just building up the library. But they'll do it. Don't, just you wait. They're probably buying some development company now as we speak. And they're going to have something. They've got the Stadia Founders Edition, which I think comes with a little device to connect to your TV or, or some shit like that. $8.99 a month pounds for the Pro Founders Edition. And then the base is... Wait, free? So, wait, are you still purchasing the games? I thought the games just came with the package. Oh, that's fucking shit. Not all the games of Stadia will be included in the library. Some of the most recent titles will have to be purchased separately. Obviously, they want their money, their new games. Okay, that makes more sense as to why there's a free package, because obviously, they're going to be selling the AAA games on there, and even if they're like full price, Google are going to take a little bit of a cut, just like Steam take their own cut. So even though there's a free package, they're just not charging you for the streaming. You're still going to buy the latest Assassin's Creed or latest whatever AAA title 
and then Google will get their little cut from that 60 pound and then they're still making their money so it's not really free it's just let's get you into the service lock you in with the free titles and then when the big titles come along and you're so used to using stadia and everything then you're just gonna buy it on stadia instead of buying it on your ps4 or your xbox one or your pc or whatever i'm definitely not gonna buy anything on stadia unless it's an exclusive i'm not about to buy 60 pound games on stadia when i have a pc to already save up the games for but yeah that's pretty much about it a lot of shit happened recently, um, Stadia is cool, I'll look into that for the future. I don't know how I feel about streaming taking over everything, but we'll just have to see how this plays out over the next 5 plus years. Are they gonna ditch consoles entirely? Maybe the PS5 and the Xbox Scarlet will be the last physical consoles. Maybe after that, they'll go full streaming, I don't know. But then again, they haven't even removed the disc drive yet because apparently people still get physical games. I mean, I get a few just because I really like a game. Like I pre-ordered Mario Maker 2 physically just because I want that because I really like that game. But most games I'll get digitally. But I understand not everyone has, you know, <laughs> this level internet. So, it's, you know, I don't want to be unfair. But even still, like all the physical games have these day one patches and they require tons of space. Can't get away with just, you know, like back in the N64 days, just get the cartridge, just slide it in, you're done. But yeah, that's going to bring an end to this. Remulus Roundup, hope you enjoyed. We talked about E3, Mario Kart Tour, Stadia, the rise of streaming, bit of law shit. So yeah, make sure to like this video, leave a comment, you know, subscribe, hit that bell, and let me know what other topics you want me to cover in the next Remulus Roundup. And Mario Maker 2 is coming out, Crash Team Racing is coming out. A lot of shit's gonna be showcased on this channel, so just make sure you're subscribed. <laughs> Because you don't want to miss that shit. It's your boy. Like, you don't want to miss that shit. Like, come on. It's your boy. So, stay subscribed. And, yeah, it's your boy. Rem. Rem is Prem. God. And I'm out.